Hi everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to the Inbox Review. Today we're going to be looking at the brand new 124th B Max Porsche 935. Right, so yeah, this eagerly anticipated kit from B Max has finally been released. Uh, it was released a few days ago, and uh, I was very kindly bought one by my friend Sam, who's crazy. And it arrived yesterday, and I want to give it a review. Uh, big fan of the BMAX kits, uh, the BMW 30 M3 is one of my favorite kits. And a quick rifle through the box, and this thing looks to be of similar quality. So, really looking forward to this. It's an iconic car, it's not one of my favorite cars, I will admit. I'm not a big fan of Porsches uh, or Porsches before someone uh, picks me up on that. Uh, but it's a good looking car, and I do love the Valiant scheme, especially the green version. Uh, which will probably be the version I do. So let's have a look through the box and let's see what we've got. Right, okay then. So there we go. Lovely box art. The two in one kit because you get two decal schemes in there. Uh, very nice box art, that iconic car. Spit and flames at the back. Uh, and obviously, you can do the white version or the Valiant green version, depending on which one you want to do. On the side of the box, we've got the green version, as you can see, which is the version I prefer prefer the colours, the looks. Uh, you've got the colours required for the kit, which the green will be interesting. It's saying H26. Hmm, does not look the right green to me, but okay. Um, so you've got two choice of numbers. You've got race number 51 or 70. And uh, yeah, for me, it's number 51 all day long. On the other side, we've got the white version, the front and rear. Very aggressive looking car. It really is absolutely beautiful, and then we get the optional detail upset as well. Did have a look at that. Um, obviously, comes with um, the connector valve for the um, air jacks and the belts and the P for the belts. The rest of it, well, it's it's fifty fifty whether it's worth adding. It's a decision you need to make. Uh, but for me, I've already got the belts, so I had a look, and there was nothing really in there I thought worth having. Um, so yeah, maybe at a later date. But for now, we're going to build it out of the box. So like I say, cracking box art. Um, really is a nice picture and very very good. So open it up. It's a typical box. So no problem there at all. Right. So we've got the main body sprue, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sprues. Your tires. Uh, your mesh, fabric, and your poly caps in there as well. So we get all that out, we'll pop it all over there, keep the rustling down to a minimum. We've got the colour call out, the decals, and the instructions. We'll pop at the back over there. Put the body there as well, tyres, etc. And those. Right, I'm going to pop that on the floor, all to my right. And there we go. Right, should we start with the body? I think we will. Let me zoom in a tad to have a look. Okay, let's start with the body. So, a very crisply moulded body. As per BMAX, we've got a little bit of marking on the roof, but that's from where it's been in the bag. Some nice thick sprue points to cut off. But for the most part, it looks pretty clean. Doesn't appear to be a lot of seam lines. Let's just have a quick look around. It's a really clean body. I can only see one or two at the minute, and they are on the front bumper just there, each side. And they are just going to run up, yeah, top of the bumper. I assume that's not a panel line. So, yeah, up and across the top of the bumper, and then just clean off the wheel arch, and that is the most part of that done. Um, so, yeah, nice clean body, nicely molded, lovely shape, beautiful car. It really is. And no real issues with that I can see at all. Got lovely vents at the front, the scoops at the back, the intakes on the side. Very, very nice. Like I say, it's a nice clean body, so not a lot of cleanup required there. So well done. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, we'll start with all the bigger sprues next. Like I say, excuse the rustling. Nice resealable bags, which are always good. So this one, we've got the chassis. We've got the body uh, tub, the floor pan tub. Uh, we've got engine detail, transmission, 
door cards, dashboard, steering wheel, brakes. Oh, the brakes are nice. Intakes, window wipers, etc., etc. So the chassis is pretty well detailed. We've got the underneath um, of the transmission slash engine there, sorry. Um, nicely moulded, so a nice bit of detail painting. So there's black on a, a black background, but I don't really do. Yeah, nice cushion moulded, nice detail. Uh, inside there's nothing really because most of it is going to be inside this tub here, as you can see. Uh, door cards, pretty minimalistic as I guess the real car would be. Dashboard, again, a few instrument gauges and clusters on there, uh, which I assume... Let's have a look. We're going to get decals for. And it doesn't appear that. Yes, we do. There they are. They're in the centre there. We'll have a look at those later. So, yeah, you've got decals for the instrument cluster. We've then got the rear engine detail, uh, transmission, various suspension components, and so on and so forth. Brake disc, quite nice. They are cross drilled. Uh, I'll try and bring you in for a little look at this. There you go, you can drill those out as you wish. Get, make them look a bit more realistic. To be honest, they're not worth drilling out. Uh, a, you're not really going to see them through the wheels anyway. And B, I prefer them with a dark wash in there. I think it accentuates them better than the hole. The holes never look right, look a bit odd. Um, so yeah, I'm happier doing that. But for the most part, the parts are nice and crisp. As you can see. Very nice. Keep going up, there's the part of the transmission. Let me come out a little bit. Yeah, the detail's good, not bad at all. There's the rear part of the engine. So I don't know if we're trying to simulate full engine or just part. I'm gonna guess it's just part because I can't see the top of that. So I think it's literally simulating part of the engine. Um, but on the most part, not bad at all. There's the engine detail on the front of the chassis as well. And there's our instrument panel and steering wheel there as well. So again, no real trouble there. Uh, big sprue, big parts, but quick clean up. Um, as with all these kits, everything's got a seam. So you're going to have to take care of those. Um, it's just one of those things. Anything cylindrical or round will have a seam. And it just needs a little bit of clean up with a sander. And you're quickly done. No problem at all. So yeah, no problems there. Fantastic. Next up, we've got the... Let's have a look. We've got the rear arches. Yes, we have. So they need gluing on separately. So a little bit of care required there. So there you go. So they've got the rear arches. A little bit of flash there. It's a bit of a shame. But there's a bit of flash there. I'm going to guess it'll probably come off yet yeah, with the fingernail. So quick sand underneath and on top as well. That's a bit disappointing for a brand new kit. Hmm, that really is a shame. I would not have expected that. There's a bit of flash on the roll cage as well. Um, yeah, that's a real shame. I would not have expected that at all. Uh, I've got the rear engine cover, part of the rear spoiler. There's the other part of it there. But yeah, I'm a bit disappointed by the flash. You can see it all around um, the roll cage part. I'll bring it in for you to have a look. So you can see, at the end of the day, it just needs sanding, but it shouldn't be there. So we've got some flash there. Along the top, quite a substantial part around the bottom of these roll cage parts. As you can see there. Yes, yeah, so I would not have expected that off a new kit, if I'm honest. Um, but a quick clean up of a sander. There's a rear boot cover and spoiler. Yeah, a quick clean up of a sander. We'll get rid of those. It's the thinnest of flash, but in my opinion, brand new kit, it really should not be there. So that's a bit of a shame. Uh, a little bit of a letdown, but hey, they can't all be perfect. And it's still going to build up to be a nice kit. I can guarantee you that. Like I say, just give it a light sand. It's very, very thin, minimal flash, but I think there's no excuse on a new kit. So yeah, so you got the roll cage components. We've got fuel filler caps by the look of it. Um... Yeah, so nothing too difficult there to do. Once you've cleaned it up, glued it together, no problem. What these are going to fit like on the body, I have no idea. Uh, time will tell on that one. Hopefully they fit with no issue. But we will see. So there we go. Bit of a disappointing sprue of that one, I'm not going to lie. Bit of a shame. But hey, what are we going to do? 
It's either that or we're going to build it. And I'll probably happily build it. Right, it's in here we've got a bucket seat. Nice retro. Oh, God. I'll just throw it on the floor. Give me a sec. Why look at it when I can throw it on the floor? Right, so we've got a nice retro bucket seat, as we can see. So that's nice. We've got your nice bit of detail in there. Once you get that painted up, that'll look rather cool. On this one, we got a uh, fire extinguisher, steering rack, various other components. I'm not going to pretend to know what they are, but there they are. Detail is not too bad on these. A hint of flash here and there, but overall, not too bad at all. And on this one, we've got the exhaust. One of the turbos. I think, were these twin turbo? I'm sure they were. I can't remember now. Uh, like I say, it's not one of my favourite cars. I don't really know a lot about them. We've got engine louver covers. Um, wing mirrors. We've got two different types of wing mirror. Okay. And yeah, again, getting any clean up. There's wisps of flash here and there. Um, it's nothing all that detrimental, really. But it's still there and still going to need dealing with. And I'm a little bit disappointed by that. It's a bit of a shame. But it should still build into a nice kit. Right, let's have a look at these parts. So I'm assuming these are brake coolers. Like on some of the rally cars. So you're not going to see a lot of those lovely rims. Because they're going to be mostly hidden up by these. These go on the centre of the wheel. As you can see. And they direct air in onto the disc. I assume that's their function, as with the rally cars. And yeah, they're gonna take away from the look of the rims a little bit, which we'll look at in a second. But they should be on the car, so they will go on the car. So again, no problem with those. Yeah, some it's it's weird how some parts are really crisp. Those parts are really, really crisp. There isn't a hint of flash on those anywhere. And yet the other sprues are riddled with it. It's very strange. Right, the rims, lovely split rims. I believe these are BBS. Um, very, very nice out of the box. So we're not really going to see much of the centre of these. Which is a shame, because they are really nice. The outers are nicely chromed. There's no need to strip those at all. They are beautifully chromed. So they can be left as is. Which is always good. The last Porsche did was Revels um, Valiant. And I bought a set of scale production rims, which cost me a fortune. They did look fantastic. Uh, like I say, you're not going to see any of that centre detail on these wheels, really. Um, which is a bit of a shame. So it was me, I'd leave them as is. Um, give a panel line wash to the centres. And then get your uh, centre lock caps painted up. And they'll look really nice. Well impressed with the rims. They're beautifully chromed. Really nice. Look almost metal. Very, very nice. Right, another chrome part. Sprue, sorry. Let's have a look what we've got in here. So in here we've got light reflectors and mirrors as well. So we've got three sets of mirrors, which is a bit strange. Hmm. Very weird. No idea why. And then we've got the light reflectors. And again, really high quality chrome. It's not too thick, it doesn't look hard, looks really good. Yeah, so quite impressed by that, that's really nice. So yeah, along with the wheels, very nicely chromed, absolutely lovely. Uh, clear parts. So yeah, we've, we've got a bit of flash uh, here and there. Uh, I'm gonna go on about it because it's disappointing, new kits shouldn't be covered in flash. Um, that's a real shame. Or, like I say, it's it's fixable. It only needs sanding, and uh, it'll build up into a lovely kit. Now, B Max's glass goes in on the BMW from the outside, and by the looks of it, it does on this too. And it makes fitment so much easier. You've got no window rubbers to mask. You literally do the glass and then put them in. Whereas on the Tamiya kit, you've got to do the glass and the window rubbers on the car. So it saves a bit of time. Uh, assuming that's how it is, we'll know in the instructions in a bit. Um, but 
that's normally what it's like. The glass is very, very nice. We've got a little bit of distortion on some of the curved parts, but that's going to be by the by. Uh, but for the most part, nice and clear, nice and crisp, optically good as well, actually, for plastic glass. That's nice, really good. Headlights and um, whatnot. Yeah, they're really good as well. No problem there at all. And again, no flash on these parts at all. So it's a bit strange how some of the sprues have flash on them already. But anyway, there we go. Clear parts, no problem there at all. Uh, is there a mass set with the kit? No, but they normally sell it separately. And they are worth buying. Um, it's a bit of a shame you don't get it with the kit, but hey, it's just one of those things. It's a detail upset and a mass set, which should be available separately at some point. So yeah, no problem with the glass. Very nice. Right, so we've got tyres and the mesh fabric to uh, simulate our grills and our poly caps. Now, the rims should be seamless, not the rims, the tyres, they normally are. Yep, so no outer seam, which is always good and fitted to the correct way, which won't be that way because there's a cut-off point, the correct way. I can't see any problem with those at all. They're nice, they're clean, no dramas. That's one of the rears. That's one of the fronts. We've got a little bit of rubbery flash in there, which you can cut away. Ooh, one of my tires has a chunk out of it, too. It's a bit of a shame. Is it going to be, yeah, that'll be visible on the car as well. Oh dear. Yeah, a bit of damage there. Be interesting to see anybody else has got that, or if it's just me. So that's a bit of a shame. And that one too. Yeah, I got a chunk out of that one as well. It's exactly the same place. Let's have a look. It's bigger. It's worse on that one than the other one. That's a bit of a shame. Hmm. Can we see it once it's on the rim? Let's just push it over there. Uh, in all honesty, nope, you're not going to see that at all. Whew, that's a relief. Shouldn't be there. And actually tell the light you can see it a little bit. Yeah, you can see it a touch when it's angled. You can just see it at the back. But only just, only just. If, you, if you've got that problem, I'd be worth dropping BMAX a line. And just explaining it because they shouldn't be there. Should be no damage whatsoever. So again, a little bit of a shame again, but one of those things. Poly caps for the wheels. Typical standard fitting has come part and parcel of these kits nowadays. And the mesh. So this is a cuttable uh, plasticky kind of mesh. That we cut to size to simulate grills and what have you. And again, quite big, but quite a nice pattern as well. I find the Tamri stuff a little bit too fine sometimes. But again, no problems with those. So there we go. So a few disappointing parts of the kit there. Um, but, yeah, it's still going to make a nice kit. It's still going to look good. And I'll still build it. Right, decals. So there's two sets of decals. So let's have a look what we've got so on here. We've got the main Valiant markings for both cars. Now I have used uh, B-Max's decals before, and they've been on no real drama. And they look good. The room register, the colours are good. Nice and vibrant. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get any issue there. When you angle it towards the light, you'll see there's some slight mark into the decals. But I think once you get them on, that will disappear. And then the good notion you've got the choice between the green or the white car. And that varies, depends on which one of these you then use. But yeah, take your time with those. And you shouldn't have any issues at all. On the other sheet, we've got the number boards. Like I say, gingerbread panel, binnacles. And some of the other markings as well. We've got the Willens belt in blue. 
And yeah, I can't see any issue there again either. Very nice. We've got Bob Woolock's call out and Peter Gregg. Got the Valiant logos and names. And again, different colours for the different cars. Green for the white car, white for the green car. And yeah, I can't see any issues with those at all. Nicely printed. All in register, no dramas there. Yeah, you'll have no issues with those. Take your time. And jobs are good. And very nice. So yeah, top marks there for the decals. I use the decals um, for the uh, Bastos um, BMW. And yeah, they went on no drama. And they were quite a um, complex decal scheme as well. Uh, yeah, didn't have a single issue with them. So hopefully with those, touch wood, they should be fine. Tim, pull the call out. Always good to get. It's good to visualise what we get. Would have liked to have seen a double sided with the green car on the back, but we haven't. Um, the decal placement looks to be identical for both cars, but obviously on the green car you're using the different colour stripes and valiance and what have you. But nice and clear. Shows the layout properly. Yeah, no problem at all. Like I, said, I would like to see it double sided, but hey, it's there. It's a good reference as well. It's better than black and white on the back of the instruction sheet. And no problem at all. Right, instructions are typical B Max. Uh, on the back, we've got the parts layout and all your spare par info, yada yada yada. Yep, and on the front, we've got the um, car itself. And a little bit of info for the car. If you want to read it, you can pause it and have a look. There we go. So, first page, we've got some, yeah, just assembly guidelines, basic safety info. You've got details about painting, all the colour call outs are there. Again, if you want to look at those, I should bring them up. You can have a little look. So, the call it out in, let's have a look. Mr. Hobby, Mr. Colour and Aquis. Uh, Tamiya. Yeah, X and XF colours. And just general colour too. H46, is that that emerald green colour? Yeah, so we're going to have to mix the colours for the body, we shall see. There it is. C92 and H8. Okay, random. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on there. It sounds to do something here, but I'm not sure what. I don't know if it's a light or whatever, but there was a confusing one of these in the BMW one as well that took me a bit of time to get my head around. Start assembly with the chassis, some of the running gear, transmission, painting up the engine, getting that rear part of the engine on as well. Moving on to the braking system, suspension system. All nice and clear, all the parts are laid out nicely. You've got these nice little boxes for all your extra PE, uh, and what have you. So yeah, nicely clearly laid out for if you want to use the detail parts, just keep an eye out for these parts, and it's all labelled there properly for you. Any decals required uh, will be pointed out as well, and all the paints are labelled as we go. Okay, next page we're on to getting the wheels and tyres on, um, starting to build up the interior. Yeah, explains the orientation of the rims and the rubber. Uh, we've got the seat fire extinguisher. Again, a detailed part explaining how the seat belts go together. Quite a complicated way of building them. Um, so just pay attention to what you're doing if you're using the detailed parts or if you're using your own. If you watch my car techniques video, which is released next Sunday, uh, you'll see. Uh, me showing how I build my belts a little bit of a simpler way but the dashboard being assembled the roll cage uh, getting the door cards on and again detail parts being added uh, we've got some holes to be drilled in the bodywork so yeah pay attention for these before you start to build it and spray it and numerous parts need gluing in place maybe before painting maybe not this is the reference you're going to have to look for as you go through as I said the windows uh, glass goes from the outside in, which I, was, I find easier to be honest and quicker. Uh, and we've got loads of these separate parts being added, so pay attention to see if these need adding before you paint or after, um, because otherwise you've got to start painting things separately and trying to glue them on with the painted, which is a little bit of a pain in the backside. Rear engine cover, 
and the build-up of the spoiler as well with that louver on the back and again the detail part you get a full PE spoiler with the detail part which is quite a nice part getting those rear wings on their bodywork hoping they fit really do so you're gonna have to sand that flash off very carefully to make sure you don't lose any material on there and attaching the engine cover as well I'm assuming the engine cover is removable yeah it slots in place so you can take it off and have a look at that engine should you wish Depends exactly on how much uh, well detailed it is. Um, we're going to attach the body to the chassis now. Again, I'm using the detail parts before painting, and this is the thing you've got to go through the instruction book and get ahead of yourself to look for parts because otherwise, if you've got the aftermarket bonnet pins, you need to remove the ones molded onto the body, um, which I didn't even notice to be honest. So I'll have a quick look. Oh, yes, they are there. There they are at the back. I uh, didn't even see those. So yeah, if you're gonna do it, really go through the kit and have a good look. You've got extra P parts to add to the back, grills on the side at the front. And looking at this, it's become more and more yeah apparent that maybe the detail upset might be a worthy buy. Uh, otherwise, you've got some bits missing on the kit that are on the real car. So yeah, I may pick up that detail set actually. Uh, parts like this on the side, you've got the grills. Uh, what have you, they're quite prominent parts, so yeah, I think I may add that myself, and then that's it, all the way through the back page to that. Right, okay, so a few disappointing parts about the kit, uh, the flash isn't really an issue, but it's a new kit, it shouldn't be there at all, that's my point, uh, but quick sand, it's going to be gone, uh, my main concern is those rear wheel arches, it doesn't interfere with the fit, once you sand it, the roll cage, they need sanding anyway, um, they always do, there's a seam around every cylindrical part on each side, so they're always going to need sanding, but the flash, it shouldn't be there, it's a brand new kit at the end of the day, let's buy the buy, clean it up, you've still got a great kit, and it's going to look absolutely fantastic. The nicks and the tyres, I'm going to contact BMAX about, and see if I get some replacements, because they shouldn't be there at all, and sadly they are, uh, but that's just one of those things, we'll see what they do, and I'll, I'll come into that on a bench update later on. But other than that, it looks to be a great kit. Um, I think that detail set might be worth adding, so I might pick one up. Look, just looking through the instructions, it becomes apparent what there is actually in there, and I think I will add one uh, to it when I build it. Like I said, I'm going to build the, build, uh, the green one first, um, and then maybe the white one at a later date, and hopefully we get some aftermarket detail sets for it as well. The kit itself, they're normally between 30 and £40, pounds, depending on where you get them from. Normally around the mid-range £35 mark. And the good kit's good value for money. I'd like to see the window masks included with the kit and not available as an extra part, but at least you can get them for them. And the detail sets are normally around the £15 mark. Can be a little bit higher, a little bit lower, depending on the car. And yeah, they're not always worth adding, I don't think, but I think on this one it will be, definitely. Um, so like I said, it looks a good kit, and I'm hoping to build it pretty soon. And uh, look forward to the rest of the releases from BMX, the RDS1, Lancia Delta S4, I think there's an ounce of Peugeot 306 as well. Quite a few cars due out. Uh, the RDS one should be next. Then we've got the um, Lancia Delta S4 in December. I think they've announced that. So, yeah, some interesting cars coming out with the Norris 200. Uh, definitely needs releasing. And the Peugeot 205 Ti uh, T16 needs releasing as well. Definitely need to see those cars. And there we go. So, I hope you enjoyed the review today and didn't waffle on too long. Uh, it does look a good kit, apart from its flaws. And uh, I hope to see somebody building them very soon. So as always, check out International Scale Model Facebook page and forum. Uh, the links to all these I'm about to say in the description of the video down below. Come join our Facebook page and forum. Very friendly page. You can share all your modeling work without fear of critique or idiots, whatever. Very well run groups. Um, you're on the channel now. Give us a subscription. Uh, sub to us. Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. Have a look at all the other videos on there as well. We've got loads of videos. I've got a full how-to build uh, on a Subaru Impreza that I'm currently filming. Uh, we're up to par 4, gets released tomorrow, and it should be about 9, 10 parts in total, so check that out. And uh, yeah, leave a comment, I'll get back to you. I do weekly bench updates, and we do a weekly live show as well. Uh, half 8 your, uh, UK, 8 30 Central, oh god, sorry. Half, <laughs> half 7 UK, half 8 Europe, 1 30 Central US, uh, every week they're on. Uh, we alternate between a build night and a proper show night. Uh, the links to those are put up all over Facebook. And we have a live at the bench uh, Facebook group as well. There's the Hangout modeling group as well for our fair hangouts. You can come join us. You see a webcam and mic. And uh, yeah, come join us. You can do some modeling with us, sit there and have a laugh. And they are very good fun. And you've got my Paul ISM Facebook page as well, where all my personal modeling gets shared, as well as ISM. 
and of course umpretail.com myself and Lee's business where we sell tools, kits, primers, thinners, cleaners, sanders, all sorts of stuff. Head on over to www.umpretail.com. Like I say, all the links are in the description down below. So have a look at that. And uh, that's it. So I'll catch you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.